Good evening all. Today's topic is myocardial protection. So as we know during cardiopulmonary bypass the heart has to be protected in a very effective and safe method. In the previous chapters we know that cardiopulmonary bypass involves a heart lung machine which diverts the blood from the patient. It performs the function of the heart and the lungs, maintains the blood's physiological and metabolic aspects and after oxygenating the blood, it pumps it back into the patient. So during cardiopulmonary bypass, the heart is totally stopped. So for stopping the heart, there are various methods to arrest the heart in a favorable milieu. So this protection entirely depends on the performance of the perfusionist. So the perfusionist is responsible for protecting the heart. No matter how effective the cardiac surgery goes on or how effective the cardiopulmonary bypass run is performed, if the heart is not protected in a safe way during surgery, the outcome of the patient will be poor. So this protection is in the hands of a perfusionist who stops the heart during surgery and restarts it after the surgery. Now the contents of today's talk would be we would define myocardial protection, how it evolved the goals of myocardial protection, the brief physiology of the cardiac muscle since we are going to protect the myocardium and myocardial protection has three or sorry. So myocardial protection has four concepts of protection. The initial one is preparation of the myocardium or preparation of the heart prior to the arrest. Protection of the heart, stabilization of the heart and concept 4 is we talk about reperfusion. Strategies and methodologies used to either attenuate or prevent post ischemic myocardial dysfunction that occurs during and after cardiac surgery. So this sums up that myocardial protection is so important. Goals to provide a motionless and a bloodless field, to protect against ischemic injury, to allow effective post ischemic myocardial resuscitation. Now coming to the evolution. Way back in 1950s itself when they were doing some cardiac work they thus doctors wanted to stop the heart and perform on a motionless heart. So in 1957 Lam et al introduced the term cardioplegia. Cardioplegia in the sense stopping of the heart or the paralysis of the heart. CLE and Young they used a solution to stop the heart which was rich in potassium and magnesium and neostigmine to stop the heart and prevent the ventricular fibrillation. So the initial experiments that were done. Dr. Melrose first designed a cardioplegic solution and even today remembered for his contribution. Then in 1960s the Brish Nader solution was designed. In 1964 Brish Nader he constituted the HTK solution which even today we use it in a more modified form. So this solution has histidine, tryptophan and ketoglutarate the main ingredients. We will be just looking into that in the next few minutes. In 1970 Benson, Rowe and Associates they infused cold ringer lactate solution with a higher concentration of potassium to arrest the heart and also they cooled the myocardium to 15 degrees centigrade. By these ways they could 
protect the myocardium. In 1980s, St. Thomas Hospital, they constitute a solution. As the name indicates, it was St. Thomas solution. It is even today widely used in most of the centers. And the most recent advanced solution is the Del Nido solution. As we see in 1995, Dr. Pedro Del Nido, he was a pediatric cardiac surgeon. So, when he was performing complex pediatric cases, he wanted a quite some time to perform his surgeries. So, he every time if the ischemic period was a shorter duration and if he had to infuse cold cardioplegic solution at regular intervals, it was a hindrance in his surgical field. So, he thought of having a long ischemic arrest interval. So, he designed a solution called the Del Nido solution or the Del Nido cardioplegia which we are widely using today and it is most welcome today. Now, brief uh, structure of the myocardium. Myocardium as we know is the middle layer of the wall of the heart. Wall of the heart comprises of three layers that is the epicardium, the myocardium and the endocardium. And this middle layer it is formed by cardiac muscle fibers or the cardiac myocytes. Now, this myocardium has three major functions. The muscle fibers, different muscle fibers does different functions. So, muscle fibers which form the contractile unit of the heart for the contraction of the heart and then there are muscle fibers which form the pacemakers to start the impulse in the cardiac cell and muscle fibers which form the conductive system that is to carry on the impulses. Now, preparation. Now, let us go into the concepts one by one. Now, how do you prepare the heart prior to the arrest? Myocardial protection begins with the preparation of the heart prior to arrest. So, what are the methods? See, when we look at the heart, it should be in a favorable condition so that after the cardiac arrest, you could get a very favorable pickup or the functioning of the heart. For that, we should have a almost normal conditioned heart. So, what are the various techniques by which we can precondition the heart? So, first of all, the body should have enough glucose loading and it should not be dehydrated. As we know, patients who are posted for surgeries, they would be nil by mouth from the day before itself, from the night before. So, we should see that the heart or the body or the heart does not starve. So, there should be enough glucose in the body or the sugars should be near normal and also the patient should not be dehydrated. 